What is up guys, it is Naf here. So today I thought I would make a guide on the weekly distraction and diversion, familiarization. Now familiarization is an event which occurs once every two hours. And once it has begun, it'll only remain available for 20 minutes. To see when the next round will start, just simply click the adventures tab, which is this compass. It may be different on your screen depending on your layout. Then just change the filter to D and D, which is distraction and diversions. It just makes things a little bit simpler. And then just scroll through until you do find familiarizations. There we go. So it does actually indicate how long until the mini game starts. And uh, it sort of gives you a breakdown, 20 minutes, and new one starts every two hours, you can do it once per week. So what you do is just teleport to Lodestone. It'll simply just teleport you to Tavoli. It's the easiest way to get there. But unfortunately, as I'll explain very soon, it does actually take you to where the minigame starts, which is a little bit annoying, but uh, we'll address that very soon. So go ahead and click that or teleport to Tavoli yourself. Either way, you end up here. And then you just go on through to the Tavoli summoning shop. So you do actually have to wait till the minigame starts before he will indicate it, but that's what you would click once it started. So I will just go ahead and wait for the two minutes to pass and then I'll jump back when it's actually available. Okay, so just while we're waiting, I will just go ahead and explain it a bit further. So essentially, uh, you do ask, pick up sticks for, to find obelisk. He won't tell you where it is. It's rather annoying. He'll only give a hint as an indication where it is. So what you need to do is actually get that hint and then look it up online because there is a there is multiple locations where it could be. I'm just having a quick look. It looks like there's at least 10 to 15 different locations. So it's not something that can unfortunately just be put on the screen where it's one or two different places. There's a fair few. So what I'll do is I'll actually leave a link to the RuneScape wiki for familiarization. So what you'll just have to do is open that up, get the hint and use that to actually uh, reference and then find the location. So it's the small downside to this mini game. No one likes having to open this sort of thing up. Yeah, I'm having a look. It looks like there's at least 20. So. It is a fair few, it's rather annoying. Some um, some of the locations really aren't easy. So there's no requirements to do this mini game, although some of these places are in areas which you can only get to after questing. So to an extent, there are requirements in that sense. But in terms of if you can get to the mini game, the obelisk where it is, then you can do it. There's no actual requirements. So, okay, so uh, there we go. It has actually ticked over now. So. Uh, just go for find obelisk and then ask where. Okay, so there's the hint. So essentially all I'm doing is I'm on another tab, just scrolling through the possible locations. As I said, you will just need to have the wiki. All you need to do is open up the familiarization wiki that I'll link. Uh, if you really want, all you have to do is control F for um, find. Literally, I just typed in the word under and it came up. So it's really not too hard, but anyway, so this one is under Falador in the Dwarven Mine. So luckily I got one of the easier ones. As I said, some of the locations are rather tedious. Example, uh, one's on the Lunar Isle. That's an example of one where you, you can't get there unless you've done the quest, unfortunately. So that is the only downside to this mini game. Although the majority of them are in simple places which don't involve quests, it's only a couple. So don't be put off by at least attempting to do it. If, if you haven't done many quests, if you're a very low level or an Iron Man who is relatively new. So once you get here, you'll notice an out of place obelisk. So just don't click teleport to pick up sticks that teleports you back to Tavoli. So definitely don't do that. So just talk to uh, pick and mix this guy and then go through the chat interface and just ask if you can help. And then once you do sure I'll have a go, then the mini game will start. So once the mini game starts, it'll last for 20 minutes or until you've lost all your focus or you've collected all the shards. So as you can already see, it told me what to collect and what to avoid. So it's, and all, don't worry if you click away. So um, just to note as well, if you want to leave, just click that at any point, but I don't advise you leave until you're done. So now, as you can see at the top of your screen, once you start, there will be, it'll indicate two different familiars. Now it'll be different depending for, on everyone. It's not gonna be the same as me, unless you're this plant guy. <laughs> it depends on what familiar it makes you. It's really irrelevant, don't worry. Just know that you'll have two up there. You've got to avoid them. So if you've done summoning before, you'll know that these are familiars, things you can summon. Again, it's all pretty irrelevant. It's just a case of 
you've, I have to avoid thorny snails and compost mounds. So it's pretty easy. As you can see, I'm barely focusing. There's heaps of familiars around here and none of them are the ones I have to avoid by the looks of things. They're real, they are really spread out. Essentially what happens is the longer you're in here, the more things you have to avoid. So it does come to a point. So there's a thorny snail, as you can see. So I'm not gonna go for that raw shard right there because I don't trust him not to get me. So essentially my UI isn't really good for this, it seems, but if you do actually notice here, I'll see if I can move things around to make it clearer. Yeah, I can't. Well, you can see there there's a green bar behind all my crappy UI. I'll see if I can just, oh, there we go. Okay. I'll just get rid of all this just to make things a bit easier. So there we go. You can see that there's the green bar and a counter. So the counter is how many shards I have. The maximum is 60. Now the amount of shards you get will impact the reward. So definitely try your best. Don't AFK. It's only 20 minutes. Just it's a weekly. So do your best. And again, if you can hit 60 is very achievable. I'm not doing the most efficient strategy here, which I'll explain a little bit later, but 60 isn't, isn't hard whatsoever. So as you can see, you just sort of, in my opinion, just do a clockwise or counterclockwise sort of motion around the whole map and just get all the ones on the outside and then you work your way on the inside and just pick up the shards. And as you'll notice, I'm moving pretty slow. Your run goes pretty quickly. I recommend you just hold your run. So there's a compost mound. So that's what happens when they get you. So if you know, it does tell you that it decreases your mental focus. All it means is your bar's gone down. And once your bar's fully empty or drained or however you want to put it, um, that's the mini game over for you. But as you can see, it doesn't drain very quickly at all. It does last for 20 minutes if you don't get any of your focus drained. So not to worry if you do get your focus drained a little bit like I just did. But it's just something to be aware of. If you're not paying any attention or trying at all, you'll probably not complete the minigame. So as you can see, there's already two more of these familiars that I have to avoid. There's not too much you can do in terms of, well, how do I get that raw shard if they're on top of it? You have to just recharge your run. But as you can see, they're not that aggressive. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting pretty close. Now it's indicating that more familiars are hunting me. So luckily it was that one. So <laughs> lucky didn't get me. So I'm going to put on my run and see if I can skim by here. That one I'm just going to have to leave till later. As you've seen before, when they drained my focus, it wasn't an absolute game changer. It didn't take away that much. So you will have to, I suppose, tank a few of these ones and just take the drain. But regardless, just stick with, well, I stick with my strategy. Just keep going around the map. Eventually, I'll, mo I'll move inwards and get the ones on the inside. But so as the mini game progresses, more, they'll add more to the list of ones that are dangerous to you. So again, there's an emphasis on just definitely not AFKing or anything like that, even though you don't need the full 20 minutes. It's just a case of the longer you're in here, the harder it is. Okay, so now they've added a fourth familiar to the list of ones that are dangerous for me. So again, it's not too much to stress about. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It's simply a mechanic of the mini game. As you go along, it gets more difficult. But as you can see, I'm on 44. I've only got, now I've only got 15 to go. So just a quarter to go. So really not too bad. Realistically, the biggest, uh, I guess, recommendation or suggestion I can really have is try to have a system. The first time I did this, I recall having a lot of issues because I was sort of just running everywhere all over the place, <laughs> watching YouTube, honestly, not really paying attention. There's, it doesn't, there's no indication on where they are if you do miss a few. So you've really got to have your own system. Otherwise you'll find that you get the most of them done, but there's a few just in random places and you do struggle. So, and more familiars are hunting me. So you, as you go, you do start to feel a bit of a pinch to hurry up because the list gets quite large of things that can actually affect you. But regardless, we'll just take the pain. Oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> I was going to say, I thought I was going to get off lucky with that one, but regardless, we got it and we've only got three to go. So I can see. Yeah. So that's another thing to note. There's more than what you need. So as you can see on my screen, just where my cursor is on the top left, there's one up there and then turning my screen, there's at least five right there. One, two, three, four, five. So keep that in mind as well. If there's some mission impossible shard where there's six things around it that are going to catch you. Just leave it <laughs> and uh, don't freak out too much if you miss one or something like that because I'm not too sure how many are actually put in in total. I couldn't find that indicated anywhere. Maybe it's random, 
but there's more than 60. And then there's more hunting meat, but at this point it's irrelevant. The bar doesn't matter when you, in terms of your award, as long as you get the 60 shards. So at this point I am well done and dusted. Don't even care about your compost mound and I'm done. So it teleports you out instantly, nothing to worry about at all. And now he's offering me the reward. So as you can see, triple charm drops or summoning ingredients. Now, this is my main account, so I already have the outfit. So I'm just gonna take the triple charm drops. So I'm gonna camp these water fiends for 40 minutes for the full duration of the buff, and I'll see what I can get in terms of crimson charm. Okay, so as you can see, our buff is down to 20 minutes. So we're halfway through these, this triple charm buff. Now, having a look at my crims or crimson charms, you can already see them at 424. That is insane, in my opinion. I was expecting about that much for the total of the buff. <laughs> I haven't actually done this in years, really, this buff and farming charms, so I'm very surprised. You can see I'm, I'm going pretty try-hard in terms of I'm not AFKing and I've got the overload and the Titan and the prayer pots and such, so... This is sort of a maximum. I'm sure someone could do better. I'm not saying this is the best thing ever, but in terms of a standard player, if you're wearing tier 80 with no pots, uh, that sort of thing, you're obviously not gonna get as many, but it's po this is just possible, and I'm sure there's more. I'm not, I'm I'm confident if you're, I was at the Chaos Tunnels, I could probably kill uh, more efficiently, because my understanding is you can AOE there, but I'm not 100% sure with that. I really don't like the Chaos Tunnels, but regardless, uh, just in terms of here, I'm sure someone could do a little bit faster. Maybe, uh, I'll be honest, I'm not 100% confident you can set up a cannon down here. I don't recall ever seeing it, but if you can do that, that would probably increase efficiency if it didn't cause too much issues with those dragons. But regardless, insane in my opinion. Over 420 minutes, so I'm expecting around 800 by the end of this, so... So there we go, 15 blues, that's not too bad, that's 5 blue charm drops. It's definitely nothing to rave about, but regardless, 852 crimsons that is crazy now what i'm gonna do when the next familiarization mini game starts which won't be for another hour is actually do the same thing on my iron man but i'll actually go ahead and pick the other loot box this one's going to be done so just to uh, realliterate i'm going to be getting the box of summing ingredients now it can have a variety of summoning supplies, secondaries, so things that you use with charms to make pouches. It doesn't include anything, or any charms rather, so usually the secondary supplies can vary between about 20k to 250k in Grand Exchange Valley. So quite frankly, it's not, it's not worth it to pick it if you've got the full outfit. It's okay compensation if you, if you want the summoning outfit and you get that. It's something, right? But... It's, it's not worth going for in itself. If you've got the full summoning outfit, get the triple charms. And if you don't want the triple charms, don't do this D&D. Although in saying that, it took me about no longer than 10 minutes. So arguably, if you got the thing worth 250K, that's sort of arguably like 1.5 mil an hour. If you could somehow do it for an hour, but you know what I mean? It's not too bad if you get, but the odds of that are pretty unlikely. You should really only do this if you need the shaman's outfit which is the summoning outfit so let's go let's see what if i got it and there we go look at that shaman's hand wrap so pretty happy and on top of that i'm actually surprised with how much i just got that's pretty good now one thing i forgot to mention in terms of i guess tips or making things easier if you've completed the as a first resort quest which is in oogalog this ogre place i'm gonna go to <laughs> Most of you probably don't go here very often at all. Essentially, you can get your run energy extended for a very long time. If you've done this quest, you can access the spars in this area. So just to reconfirm, the easy way to get there is just home teleport and click this one if you have it. Now, if you haven't unlocked that lodestone and you are a mainscaper, you can use a ring of dueling to teleport to mobilizing armies, which is just in the corner there. I guess I'll open the map back up though. If you haven't got it unlocked, you can teleport here with a ring of dueling and just run east and probably get the, you probably should get the lodestone while you're at it. But regardless, if you complete it as a first resort, uh, you can use this place. So you come to Ooglog and there's a few different spas. They all do different things. But the one in question right now is the saltwater spring. So essentially what you can do is you go ahead and jump in and what it will do is it'll mean your run energy lasts a lot longer depending on your agility level. The, the buff lasts between 10 and 25 minutes. Your run doesn't drain as fast. Actually, there we go. It actually goes up a bit. So if you just stare at it, I'll probably zoom at it for the sake of not having to focus on something small. It's going down as it usually would, but then you can see it actually popping back up. So it means you can pretty much have unlimited run whilst doing the familiarization mini game. Now it's pretty optional. 
I did it twice on my Iron Man and Mainscape account without the buff and I did completely fine. So it's honestly a min maxing. It's more, I'm just more including it for the sake of it's a thing. <laughs> if I don't, someone will point it out. So you can get it if you want. Quite frankly, I don't think it's worth it unless you're really min maxi or maybe if you plan on doing a farm run or something after doing the familiarization and you want to get the value out of the full duration of this salt water buff. So regardless, that's that. Okay, and just with that, so the triple charms don't work with Bork, and they also don't work with Talon Beast charms or Elder charms, and they also don't work with the charms received from killing Orc Legions. Now, quite frankly, I'm not too sure what Orc Legions are. I haven't done that content before, but that's what it's telling me on the resource I'm looking at. So just for you to be aware if that's what you had planned. Otherwise, that's everything for this DND. Again, it's weekly. Get stuck into it if you don't have this outfit. As you can see, extra summoning experience is great and also just to uh, reconfirm there will be a link in the description with the familiarization guide i suppose on the runescape wiki so have a look at that when you get given the location because you'll never find it based off of those hints but thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one